Hello. I would like to talk a little bit about an experiment that I did here in my secret lab in Würzburg, Germany. So I have a look at this. Isn't that beautiful? That's the iPhone. And let me push this button. A gorgeous little tune on the iPhone. And that's the thing. This is actually a piece of music composed by an artificial intelligence on the iPhone and played on the iPhone. So today I will talk about this experiment. How did I get this all up and running? What steps are necessary in order to have an iPhone that composes music with a transformer? But before we start, please be so kind. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and if you have any questions or comments, use the comment section. So let us get started. This is code, so there will be a little code in the near future. But first, let's talk about generating music on iPhone with transformers, which is already a very thick topic. So what I did, this is the whole, I would say, like the pipeline, how to go full circle. I started with a data set, music by Johann Sebastian Bach, or the style of Johann Sebastian Bach. This data set I used to train GPT-2, which is a decoder-only transformer. You might remember it from GPT-3 or GPT-4chan and all those fancy models that are now available for language generation. They can also be used for music generation if you just manage to map all your music to text files. And then with, with Core ML, which is the library by Apple for neural networks or machine learning in general, if you do a conversion from the hugging face, face model to Core ML model, you can run it on your iPhone, on your iPad, on Apple TV, on your Mac. So this is what what um, what is what is now possible on those devices. I'll say something about that in a moment. And finally, audio toolkit kit on the right side, which is something that allows you to do quite a lot of audio work on your Apple device. It's recording sound, playing sound, manipulating sound, and coming up with samplers and doing MIDI. You can even send MIDI stuff to, to any, any recipient um, that you might imagine. So this is like a holistic experience. And I'm getting more and more excited here. Today, it's just a matter of piecing things together. Like you have a jigsaw puzzle, and you just make sure that the pieces fit. I remember, I think it was 2017 when I did the first experiments of tiny little neural networks on the iPhone. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. You have a smart device and has some neural network on it, and you do AI work with it. There was quite a hassle to get it up and running. Things changed in the meantime. CoreML, big release that allows you to run inference on your iPhones. You won't train, don't train on the iPhone. And now it's just a walk in the park. Credits where credits are due. The model that composed the music you just heard is trained on the JS Fake Corel's dataset. JS Fake Corel's dataset from Oma Peracha. It's a dataset of 404 part Corel's by Johann Sebastian Bach, the guy in a picture hiding behind this mask. Um, they are in the style of Johann Sebastian Bach. So Oma came up with a Corel generator which took into account the fancy rules of composing the music and composed more music. The original um, Johann, Sebast Johann Sebastian Bach dataset has maximum 400 songs. So there's a data set and you know deep learning engineers are always very happy when they have a data set. I mapped it to an intermediate representation and then to text files and then well it became um, a corpus that I could train on. Next this beautiful. I had this in my in my backlog on my to-do list, I think for a year, because I always wanted to do this, I'm training GPT, but why not deploy it on the iPhone or the iPad or the Apple TV? Swift Core and L implementations of transformers by Hugging Face themselves. You'll find it freely available on GitHub and I'll provide the link to this repository as well as the link to the JSFX Corel's dataset in the description of this video. And this is a perfect, perfect case study of what needs to be done in order to map some of the most important transformers to CoreML. So most important transformers, you have, well, three categories. It's encoder-decoder transformers, you have encoder-only, and you have decoder-only transformers. 
encoder only BERT, decoder only GPT and all its variants. And this is what really, really what I, what I needed. Mapping my music model to CoreML, taking inspiration from this great um, code base. I had to change a few things here and there. So getting it up and running with um, the um, with new libraries, versions, versions changed over time. And also my GPT architecture was different from um, the GPT architecture that was used here. So I extended the converter in order to handle arbitrary architectures of GPT-2 models. And then just by the click of a button or running a Python, uh, Py Python script, I got the Core ML model, which I then just quote unquote dra dra dragged and dropped into Xcode. And finally, AudioKit, also link in the description, a library that you can just plug into any of your um, implementations that you do on Mac and it allows you to do so many great um, audio works. It makes your life so easy. So you don't go down to the lowest level of audio manipulation. It's all in there. Okay, good. Let me show you a little around, just a little around in, well, source code, which I promised. So what you see here, a lot of things, nothing to be afraid of. This view you have every day when you do Xcode development. So for iPhone implementing in Swift it might look a little bit different from the average view that you have when you're a data scientist or when you do deep learning. This is deployment, so you have to deal with a couple of things. What happens here is, well, here in the resources, this is my project. Here is my neural network. So this is the original Hugging Face PyTorch model mapped to a Core ML model in 77 megabytes. And these are the target platforms that I could run it on. I checked it on iOS and also on macOS. Seems to work. Also already opens quite a lot of um, possibilities. And well, let me make this a little bigger. Nothing, yeah, you have good storage and so on and so forth. Precision, float 16, that's good. A couple of layers that are available here the usual suspects. And this also, well, I could even, I think, encrypt it so that no one who gets access to my application can steal my neural network. Or well, that's something that I don't care that much about. You can do quite a lot of things with that. So this is a CoreML model that is available. And there's a little code which actually um, makes it available. You do the inference, you do the sampling, like generating token by token. And once your tokens generated, they get mapped to something that you can actually listen to. Let me show you something that you can actually listen to. I run this application, takes a moment. It will now spin up the iPhone simulator here on my machine. Um, you could also deploy it directly and run it directly on your iPhone if you connect it via cable. But well, this is easier to show because it's right on the screen. So this is just a blank application. What you can do here, you hit compose and then it does some fancy work here. It turns out, well, look at this. Here is a piece of music. Still have to do a little visuals here because this is something that you usually would not expect when it's, would not expect when you inspect music because these are the fancy music tokens that I use all the time, which tells you, well, when a piece uh, note starts, how much time progresses when a note ends. And you can use this to model it, model all kinds of music. Let's do that again. And why not? Let's do this again. And one more time. So you see that generation time is quite stable. Oh, one more time. And one more time. Okay, look at this. Generation time, tokens, 40 per second. That's okay. Mm, I think those are even 50 tokens. Tokens per second. It's how much musical material can be generated on the iPhone. And this is a very, very, very interesting topic. Um, when I remember well from all the data sets that I've worked with, if we have a piece of music from a huge data set that includes quite a lot of styles, and you just take a look at four bars of music, on average, you would have 300 tokens for four bars of music and the usual average amount of instruments. So you could generate this in, I would say, like 10 seconds roundabout. So it takes some time. But here for just a few bars, it takes one, two seconds, seconds. So this is quite fine. Also, this here does, does not run on the iPhone. It's the iPhone simulator 
running on my Mac. So it's roughly the speed of my Mac. When I run this model or this application on my iPhone, it's around about 35 tokens per second. Still fine. You just click, you wait one, two seconds, and then you have a tiny little piece of music. What surprised me a lot is I deployed it on an iPad Pro that we usually do use um, for, for art, for visual work. And there was one token per second. I tried it on a new, or rather new, it's not the newest, on an iPhone 11, one of the big ones. No, way slower. Um, and also on an uh, iPhone XS, I think, which is has been either released this year or year before, also quite slow. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very surprised. This iPhone, which is an iPhone SE from 2020, was the fastest device that I had here in my household definitely points in the direction and the direction would be well now today it's possible maybe it's not fast enough depends on what kind of problem you would like to solve in the near future things will be different of course those those machines they tend to to get faster and faster and faster and also there's another to do on my to-do list there's a way to port hugging face transformers to Apple Neural Engine, which promises, again, a significant speed up, does some optimizations, and then the neural network would be even faster. So I'm really looking forward to dig deeper. But for today, just, just a tiny little proof of concept. In summary, what you've seen here is, well, you train a neural network with Python using Hugging Face, you compile it to a CoreML model, you put it into your application in Xcode programming in Swift, do a little bit UI design here. Well, it's not really UI design. It's just a couple of texts and a couple of buttons. And then um, the only thing that is left, you call the model to generate some tokens. And then you use those tokens in time to just trigger the, the node events that you've he heard here. Beautiful every time I do it. And here is something that I did not mention yet. Maybe it's a cliffhanger. Maybe I talk a little bit more about that. Sending MIDI. So you could take the iPhone with this app, connect it to your computer, connect it to Logic, Ableton, Cubase, Fruity Loops. You could even connect it to your electric piano or to your synthesizer. And you would push this button and then it would send the note events, the MIDI events to the external hardware and software and play the music there quite a lot of um, possibilities that are available right now but that's all for today running music models on the iphone thank you very much have a nice day